guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about um, your Talavera tile design. I'm going to set you up with the process. Um, it's fairly easy. It is. It might take you a little bit more time than you expected, um, but I think that you'll like it. It's pretty relaxing. For those of you that did not do last week's assignment, you're going to be a little bit confused by the things that I'm talking about. So go ahead and jump on Google Classroom and get that assignment done. It won't take you very long. And that way you get those that assignment turned in. Um, if you haven't done it and you're watching this video, please make sure you go and do that. So Talavera is basically um, a really, really old type of ceramic. So over, you know, 300 years ago, um, it was created by Spaniards actually. Um, and it's sort of a type of majolica pottery. And um, majolica is an, an enamel um, tin, uh, enameled earthenware, I guess. Um, and they use a hard white glaze on the actual bisqueware, and then they use just a minimal um, color palette um, on the actual tiles, and the white background really makes these um, colors pop. So that's why they're really well known. Um, the other reason is because it can only be considered Talavera if it's hand painted with these specific colors. So um, black, blue, green, orange, yellow, and mauve. And um, they have to be hand painted. And it has to come from Pueblo, Mexico, or else it's not considered like authentic Talavera. And there's only like six to nine studios in the entire world that have that authentication. So you might go to like Home Goods or uh, TJ Maxx or something like that and see something that looks like a Talavera um, planter, but it's probably not. It's probably just a knockoff. And, um, and that's okay, I guess, but if you're really into art or collection, um, you know, you'll really want to look for that authentic uh, stamp, I guess. Um, these colorful ceramics, they're found in tiles, planters, animals, uh, bowls. So um, I've seen them on pools, I've seen them lined gardens. So there's lots of different ways that they use um, this Talavera technique. Um, but it's very cool and it's got they've got amazing design quality to them and they really focus on space and balance and different shapes so that's what we're going to talk about when it comes to your Talavera design that you're going to create so without further ado let's get started all right guys so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start um, our Talavera tiles but before we can actually start the design process we need to get an inventory of lines and shapes so this is something that we would do normally do in class as a whole group but um, because we don't have that luxury we're going to do it here so this is our inventory of lines and shapes Okay, so basic lines, basic shapes. So let's just start with our line. Let's start with our shapes first. So square would be shouted out. Circle, triangle, oval, rectangle. Um, what else? Diamond, maybe a horseshoe. Um, a crescent. So those are your basic shapes. Now, the ones that kids always like to shout out, shout out are hearts and then a star. Okay, now the star doesn't bother me, but I will tell you that's going to be really hard to repeat over and over again exactly the same. So stay away from it. Um, the heart, you cannot do. The heart is on the no list. You guys are in high school or class. You're not creating a first grade piece of artwork. So hearts are out. However, you can use any of these, okay? So now we're gonna get into our line inventory. So what does that mean? So that means just different types of lines. So straight line, zigzag, wavy, you could do a loop-de-loop. -loop. And also this brings me to, if you change the spacing, of any of these, it's gonna change the entire look. So that's also something to think about. Um, let's see, uh, 
trying to think. Um, okay, well, while we're on waves, I guess you could do these kind of waves. Um, there's this one. It's kind of like a cursive S. There's the picnic table. And you can fast forward and rewind this. Now you guys can make these bigger. I'm just drawing kind of small so that way they all fit. Um, there's the castle line. There, I mean, there's just so many. We could keep going and going. Lines are always, you know, so much more imaginative, I guess. I guess shapes, you could get into more shapes if you wanted to. So, you know, push a side in, push a side out, but that's getting into other stuff. Um, and you can do other shapes too. So if you have stencils, Oh my gosh, more power to you. That's going to be incredibly helpful um, to you for this assignment. So you get the idea. So you can keep going. You can look them up online, different types of shapes. And then don't forget that if you uh, make them bigger or smaller and spread them out, you're going to get a completely different look. The other thing is, is you can double this stuff up and it gives it more of a three-dimensional quality to itself. Okay, so, so that's also something to think about. So... Create an inventory of lines and shapes, and then you're gonna move on to the next step, which is prepping your paper for your Talavera tile. So that's what we will do next. Okay guys, so all you need is a piece of paper, something to write with. If you have a ruler, that would be great, but if not, anything with a straight edge, so like, um, a piece of notebook, like scrap, uh, what am I trying to say? Post-it note, like a book, anything. Another uh, piece of paper that you could fold in half to use as a straight edge is perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the edge of my paper to um, create my tile. So I am going to, I don't wanna put it in the middle of the page because I'm afraid that it won't be square. So I want you guys to make a six by six tile. So I'm just gonna kind of mark this. Let's make it all the way around. So again, if you use the edge of your paper, then you can get a really good straight edge. If you do not have a ruler, do not freak out just eyeball it okay i don't even care if you use the whole paper if you want you can um or just make a square it's okay it's not gonna be the end of the world okay so just make a square make it big enough that you can actually see what it is that you're drawing though so this is gonna be where I put my Talavera tile. Okay. Um, I think I might draw like this. All right, so then the next thing is, I'm gonna take my ruler and I wanna divide this up into four quadrants. So that way my design stays balanced. It's kind of equally distributed around the design. And I'm just going to make what they call, I mean, I've heard them called lots of things, but kind of call them whisper lines or ghost lines, because you want to be able to, um, oh, I could have cleaned my ruler off. I got clay on it. Um, you want to be able to erase it. So do it pretty lightly. I'm going to do, I think I'm probably going to do this in pen. So if I mess up, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And if I do it in pencil, you're not going to be able to see it. My whisper line was too soft, too light. There we go. Okay. 
So I divided it into four quadrants. You could even divide it into additional quadrants if you wanted to. It really just kind of depends on, you know, your personal preference. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, but you could stop here. So I've got four sets. I'm going to go ahead and add another one. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. See, that's probably why you should measure it. That's okay. We're not going to get too uptight about it. Now, if we were going to make a tile out of this, like in real life, then we would want this to be pretty exact. Okay, so this just gives me more lines um, that I can follow in regards to my design. But before you do this, what you're going to want to do is a inventory of lines. So we're going to Okay, so now that I have my grid drawn out, I'm gonna use my shape and line inventory to build my Talavera tile. And because we're creating balance, whatever I do in one section, I wanna do it all the way around, okay? Um, now again, I have mine divided even more because I just that just helps me draw visually, but you don't have to do that. You can just leave it with the four quadrants. So I tend to like things really organic, meaning with really round shapes. Um, but you never know, some geometric shapes might pop in here. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with something really basic. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to do like a half circle. So I know if I did that to this side, I need to do it to my other three sides. And I'm going to attempt to make it about the same width, um, tall and wide. And that can get a little bit tricky. If you want to get it really precise, you know, use a ruler. Okay. So, and then on the side of your tile, it would be cool if you kind of show me um, the shapes that you use to build your tile. And because I like dimension, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat that one more time. And you'll find in artwork that is pretty common and it will make your work look much more complex than it really is. So then I'm just going to add that over here. So it kind of shows um, what I've done. Okay, so maybe now I will start in the middle. And some people would tell you, well, you should have started in the middle to begin with. Well, you don't have to. And I'm just going to continuously build up this pattern. And again, we want balance. So whatever I do to one spot, I know I'm gonna do to the next. Now it would be preferable if you guys did this in pencil. It's just, if I do this in pencil, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So there's my shapes. That one looks a little bit skinnier, but that's all right. Okay, I think I'm gonna do some diagonal lines, which is very odd for me because I don't normally do, like I said, really geometric stuff, but it's never too late to change. And I wish we were going back to school because I have all those tiles in the back kiln room. We could totally transfer these on there. 
and create your very own official Talavera tile. Although I guess it wouldn't be authentic because we're not in Pueblo, Mexico. There are other towns besides, well, I think they're like little areas inside of Pueblo maybe. I've never, I've been to Mexico before, but I've never been to Pueblo. Um, like I think Tecali is Tecali, Mexico and Cholua, Mexico. Those also are cities or communities um, that are in Pueblo maybe that um, also are authentic Talavera studios. So you can see here that just by repeating kind of this outside edge, I'm sort of replicating what I already have. So it's creating a sense of unity. It's creating a sense of cohesiveness. You don't want to just put random stuff in here just for the sake of putting it in there. You know, you want it to enhance your design, not bring it down. But since I have these lines, these look a little bit bare to me now, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add those. Look at me embracing my geometric design I've created. Ooh, I don't like it now that it's on there, but that's okay. Maybe I would like it with color. It's too much, I think, too much. Sometimes that happens when you design stuff. You can, sometimes simplicity is better. And if you need inspiration for your Talavera tile, please don't hesitate to look them up. They have a lot of floral motifs, but I know that some of you guys will struggle with that. And so that's why I just left it at um, basic shapes and basic lines. So with that said, let's go ahead and put some um, cool lines in here. And I think I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to do this kind of this cursive S situation. And because I have that, that line there, I'm kind of just staying on that line as I go all the way, ah, as I go all the way across. I'm gonna turn my paper, maybe, since I'm right-handed. Turn your paper, not your body. Just like we learned about cutting, turn the paper. Not your hand. And do you see how that's not exactly like that one? It's not really what we want. We want it to be exact, but I don't want this video to be, you know, a hundred minutes long. But I'll make another one and it'll be much more precise. Think of it as, you know, doing something in class. You know, I do like a five minute demo and then you guys get to work and then I come around and I check in on you. Okay, so number nine was my line. And before you put them on your tile, guys, you might want to practice first, like have just a piece of scrap paper, like off to the side or a notepad and practice it before you put it on your paper. I mean, if you're working with a, with a um, pencil, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put um, some circles in between these because I really feel like it's lacking something and it needs a little filler. And you don't necessarily have to fill the entire tile, but you wanna you want to fill the majority of it. The other thing you could do is you could figure out this part and then put it right on your design. 
So I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. When I do my final piece, I'll spend a little bit more time organizing my shapes, organizing my lines, deciding, okay, do I like that? Do I not? Does it really go together? Does it look cohesive? Because those are all good things to think about when you're creating artwork. And it really is what separates um, an artist that is committed to their design compared to maybe an artist that isn't so much. I think a lot of times artists have a lot of luck. Um, but there is something to be said about um, practice and perfection. So I think there's kind of these two, several different very, I guess, broad groups of ceramic artists that might think that artwork should be more natural more organic and you should just create off the cuff like I'm doing right now. And then there's more of like a guild feeling where you should learn the basic techniques really, really well. You shouldn't move on until you know them, um, you know, to create, you know, masterpieces. So, you know, it just kind of depends as you study art, you know, you'll kind of develop your own kind of theories and thoughts about all of that stuff. Okay, so number 11. I think, let's see. I think I'm gonna do like some kind of zigzag to kind of join all of these pieces together. And if I'm lucky, if I had a protractor, I could do like a line. Um, so we're gonna eyeball it. I am gonna kind of draw it out though, I think, with my pencil. I don't know what that's going to look like. I definitely think I will double up on this because I don't like the way it looks single. It looks weird to me. This would be a very modern Talavera tile. It'd probably cringe. It's all right. It's a modern twist on a very old art form. I wonder if there's like a set of artists that do like the drawing part of it. Because if you watch those videos, they do those image transfers. So I wonder if there's artists that do the drawing work versus the actual painting. I'm sure there is. It's like different positions. The guy's mixing the clay. It's probably not the same guy glazing. At least they didn't look like they were the same people to me. But what's cool about Talavera is, you know, there's no two alike because they are all handmade. And that's very cool. But that's what I love about ceramics. Oh, that dents are not nice. I kind of like it. Although it does look like a saw, especially with the circle in the middle. So with that said, I think I'm, I'm gonna do another one because I don't like the way it looks like a saw blade. But I'm gonna back it up here and I'm gonna make it wider. Ah, oh, this might screw the whole thing up. Ooh. But you can see how this kind of becomes quite mindless. You know, it's it's relaxing. I mean, I could do this all day. Okay, I'm digging it. Except I forgot to add my, um... so 12 and 13. So this one I added a double line, right? 
And then this one was the bigger, the bigger zigzag. And let's see. I think I would probably call that good because if we add way too much more, it's gonna look really just way too crowded. I might add another zigzag right here. Actually, I think I will do that. Because again, you know, we're trying to make this balanced out. And right now, it's looking a little bit unbalanced here in the corners, but I think I can make it look cohesive just by adding that same, that same shape. So let's try it. It's almost, mine is almost starting to look like a mandala, if you have ever studied mandalas. And we make mandala plates in ceramics too. Now, I know some of you are going, there's no way I can do that, Miss Rouge. I just want you to try. That's all I want you to do. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well you guys can actually do with this. Okay. So there we go. There we have my Talavera tile. And then of course I would go back in and I would erase those pencil marks. And if we were in class, we would do some um, an actual image transfer and then we would transfer this to a ceramic tile that's in bisque and then we would glaze it. So have fun with it guys. Don't get too stressed out. You know, um, like I said, I would maybe do jot down some design um, on a different piece of paper um, to kind of come up with some ideas, play with it, and then create your rectangle, I'm sorry, your rectangle, create your square, divide it into fours, and go ahead and get to it. I can't wait to see them. Once you're finished, go ahead and snap a picture of it and send it to me.